Hey there, adventurers, and welcome back to another episode of the Awkward Dungeon Master. This week, we're going to be talking about the dip method of painting your minis. So before we get started, there are a couple of things that you're going to need. Uh, with the dip method, typically, it's made, uh, it's a fast and dirty painting method to where you should only need three to five colors. I tend to go a little bit overboard and I use about seven. Uh, but if you have three to five colors, I typically use uh, cheap acrylics. So I just picked these up at Michael's and they run three to four dollars a tube uh, versus if you get the little containers of the Citadel paints, which can run you anywhere from like eight to ten. So it's just a matter of what you prefer. Uh, I clear coat mine when I'm done to kind of protect them so the paint doesn't chip off, but that's just a personal preference. I know there's going to be a lot of people out there that are not fond of that. But get whatever paints you want. Three to five colors is basic. And then uh, some paintbrushes. You're going to need a cup with some water. And then a plate, napkins, and uh, gloves. And the last thing you're going to need, which we'll use at the end of this video, this is why it's called the dip method. Once we have color blocked the miniature with those couple of colors, we're going to come back and we're going to dip it in this poly shades uh, urethane stain mixture. So let's get started. So I did pull one of the D&D HD minis that I used for my comparison video. This is one of the tiefling sorcerers, the one that had the little sword effect on it. And I kind of want to be a little bit different and I want to make his skin purple. So I'm going to custom mix some purple really quick, which would be red and blue. Mostly red with just a tiny bit of blue if you want to uh, do the same. And you don't need a lot. I always wind up wasting a bunch of paint when I do this. I'm just going to use a brush for this one. It has a cap on it. Okay. Mm, that might be too much. The other thing too is uh, it's a little more red than I wanted. So I'll put some more blue in there and make it more purpley. But it's still too dark, so I'm just going to add a little bit of white. Yeah, that's a good purple. I like to custom mix a lot of colors. There we go. That's better. Nice medium purple. Excellent. Cool. Just did it the long way. It's fine. And I grabbed a couple different size brushes. I have seen people do this method with only one size of brush, kind of a medium small uh, flat. But honestly, whatever brushes you have, uh, this is a great method, especially for people who are not fantastic at painting or people who are new to painting miniatures. Because when you do the dip, it gets down in all the creases and things, and it actually hides a lot of your really sloppy lines and stuff. So you don't have to super worry about how neat the painting itself is. So anytime I'm painting miniatures, I like to go from the lowest layer to the top layer, and then uh, anything that's kind of in an awkward spot, like we have the underside of this cape that's gonna be kind of hard to get to, so I'll probably paint the cape part first and then come back and get the pants, because you can't really see them that well. But I always like to start with the skin, because it's the lowest layer on the mini. The hair's on top of that, anything um, around the face is gonna be over where their skin is. So, I'm gonna do that really fast. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just try not to have any big clumps or anything. Because whenever you go to uh, dip the mini, you don't want all of those fine details filled with paint. Because that's what the dip is for. Okay, so that's his face. Let's get his, got some exposed skin on his wrists here. And you might see I'm removing the excess paint onto the paper towels that I set up right here. That's just to kind of prevent some of that clumping of paint that we talked about. Okay, cool. Um, another thing that I like to do, I just got a little bit of paint on the, uh, the spell effect part, which is clear, and I'm probably going to do a really washed out paint on top of that. So I want to take this dark purple off. If you just get the brush wet, take the excess water off, and then come back, you can peel that off pretty well. So that is a trick that I use anytime I have overpainted something that I really don't want to have that. And we have his tail, and we can get into a different color. So a quick little picture of that so we can show you guys a close up. Let's move on to the next color. Part of me really wants blue for the outer cloak. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to do blue. I kind of 
kind of want it to be a lighter blue, though. I'm the worst, you guys. You don't have to custom mix a bunch of shit like I am. I just want it a little bit lighter. I'm fine. Just a little bit brighter of a blue. That's all I wanted. Perfect. And if I make it all the way through this video without getting some kind of paint on my face or arms, I will be astounded. So we're just going to get on here and we're going to paint all of his over stuff blue. I will say it's really hard not to get crazy with this because I normally do more detail than I'm doing right now. We said quick and dirty, so I'm trying to keep it that way. So when we talk about color blocking, we just mean like the cloak is blue. I'm not going to go back and add any kind of gold trim. Like, there's a really nice edge on this where I could go back and add some gold trimming or something if I wanted to, but that is not the point of dip method, so I'm not going to do that with this mini. I just made an oopsie and I'm trying to fix it. I should probably leave those and show you guys how good they cover up. I just can't do it. And this is a big section, so I'm kind of just throwing some paint down, but uh, don't forget to come back and get those big clumps because you do not want them again on there because that edging there's like a little line along the edge of this the dip will get down into that and still accentuate the edge of this cloak okay i'm getting in that really awkward spot right now and i'm getting blue all over his pants so we'll get to come back and fix that later watch for clumps when you get paint on areas that you didn't originally intend also because those will dry there and then you'll have funky shit when you go back to paint those areas but I love this method, especially for uh, newer painters, because I feel like it really helps build their confidence a little bit. So like, oh my god, this mini looks so terrible and the worst, I'm never painting miniatures again. It takes practice, but with the dip method, even if you do a mediocre or even bad job on a miniature, like if you have... I saw somebody one day, she was trying to paint it really fast because she wanted to dip it. It was a friend of mine. She literally took just whatever brush she grabbed, three colors of paint and just threw them on there. She didn't even make sure it was fully covered, didn't make sure she stayed to the areas that she kind of wanted to be that color, and it looked fantastic after the dip, honestly. It looked great. Um, I think I have a picture of that one I can show you guys. But you can't even tell that she didn't stay in the lines at all. That is the blue. Picture of that for you guys. Let's do the hair, because um, I actually really want this guy to have white hair so it stands out. i use my small brush because I actually have some some oopsies in that area as well. Oh no! I missed the spot. Some paint on that spell effect again. Nobody saw that, but it's fine. It does have horns too, but I want the horns to be an even different color than everything else. Right now I'm just trying to come back and get the hair. It's probably not going to be perfect because again, we're trying to do this quickly. So I missed kind of a spot where I had some blue. So you can see through it a little bit, but it's going to be okay. So you guys see a picture of his hair. You might even be able to tell that there's some... Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of blue peeking through on his hair, but the dip will cover that up too, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. And then I come in on his pants, and then there's like an undercoat that I probably didn't need to worry about the edges of the sleeves, but I chose to, so we're going to paint that green also. Try to go for brighter colors when you're doing this as well. It does better with the dip. The dip is going to darken everything in addition to bringing out all of those details. So you can pick like comically bright colors and it's going to look great. And some boots too, so we'll come back and do those in brown. Honestly, brown's usually the last color I do, but I almost always use it for all of their uh, belt pouches and stuff. Um, this is a really cheap paint from Walmart. It works fine. Uh, for what I'm using it for, just for some of the brown stuff. It's really thin and it doesn't cover as well, so I would not get the Apple Barrel paints from Walmart. They're just, they're really crappy, but I am using it because it's what I have. It will work. It just comes off really easy, and you have to do two to three coats, typically. You know what, it might be good for stuff like spell effects because uh, there's a glove under the spell effect that I'm trying to do a little bit of stuff on and it looks pretty cool on that but I can see a tiny little dot in here that I missed with paint I'm not gonna bother going back for it because the dip is going to cover it up normally when I do detail paints on hero miniatures I'll come through and I paint every little pouch and things on the belt different colors but with the dip method I just want to reinforce 
it's block painting everything. And I am freehand holding this. Um, or sometimes you run into the problem of like earlier when I accidentally took some of the paint off of the hair because it wasn't dry all the way. Um, there is a sweet little trick you can use where you take a little piece of a blue ticky tack and you put it on top of a pill bottle and then you stick your miniature to the top of the pill bottle so you have a handle. Citadel also makes a, a fancy little contraption to hold your small and medium sized miniatures. You can paint as much or as little on this type style of painting as you want to. I'm just doing one last little once over to see if there's anything crucial that I missed. And a couple little things just with that quick paint on the uh, the bulk of the miniature. Everything looks pretty good. I'm gonna do one more update on the photo. It's gonna look like crap. Like I just want to be clear. It looks really plain and shitty but it's gonna look awesome when we're done. Let's do a quick wash on the spell effects and then we'll give everything a couple minutes to dry. It at least needs to be tacky before you go to do the, the dip itself. And uh, spell effects always seem to give me some trouble. I don't know about the rest of you guys that do paint. But what I've found lately is that don't make a wash, just make a really thinned down paint. It should still all hold together, it just shouldn't be completely watery. And then just do one pass. See, that's even still kind of thin. I'll just keep pulling some more paint into it and see what we get here. And I'm going to go over the top of the, uh, the hand that's inside of it too. Even though I painted that brown, just to give it some depth. But I'm pretty happy with that. Make sure with the bottom, it's all consistent. Take any excess globs off, because again, they just detract. And dip the whole thing down in that stuff so it'll help with that as well but i'm pretty happy with that you guys let's get another photo here and now we wait all right it's been about five to eight minutes now and everything is mostly tacky at this point it is what it is and we're just going to go for it so i have my poly shade stain and polyurethane one step mixture here i went for the mission oak which is a medium dark kind of color. You can use whatever color you want. Just shake it up before you open it. I'm using a paint key to open this up and then I'll use a hammer to shut it if you're not familiar with opening paint cans and things. Uh, typically I use a flathead screwdriver but I have no idea where it's at. This is extremely messy and it will stain your hands. So always put on gloves or use like a set of tongs or tweezers or something if you're going to do this. In one go we're going to dip the whole miniature down into the polyurethane mix and uh, the nice thing about this is since it is a polyurethane you don't have to clear coat anything afterwards it does the essential like wash stain kind of effect where it sinks into all the fine details and things and it also provides a protective layer for the paint that you've put onto the miniature. So it's an all-in-one. Mine's getting kind of low because we use a lot, in case you can't tell. Uh, typically I will take it outside and uh, shake it off, but since we're doing this with you guys, I'm just going to do this. I do this afterwards anyway. Um, I just wipe as much of it off with my gloves as I can. You can see it's very, very dark. Don't worry too bad, just get as much of the surface stuff off of it as you can. I like to roll them around in my hands. Take it out into the grass or something and shake it off. Don't don't get it on anything you care about because uh, it will permanently stain stuff. That's as much as I'm going to get off like that. So these are trash now. I'm just going to set that on there and get it out of the way. Uh, the other thing you can do if you still don't like the way it looks is you can take a paper towel. Fold it up, and you can take the corner and come in and do some little detail work. It's like I don't like how much is there, so I'm gonna pull some of that out. I went and got a fresh plate too to set this on, just so I don't get any of the stuff off the bottom on my table. Pull as much or as little of this urethane crap off as you want. Okay, it's gonna be kind of hard to see in here, uh, but we'll give you a closer look. And it's still wet. Sweet! 
So I would just leave it on the plate or whatever you have it on. Don't use paper towels because the paper itself is going to get stuck up in the polyurethane and peel off when you go to take the miniature, uh, which you don't want. But it's going to take 24 hours to cure all the way before you really want to handle it too much. Uh, I've tipped them over and stuff to give the bottom an opportunity to dry because the bottom won't dry all the way with the way that it's sitting right now. And uh, even tomorrow morning, if I leave it like this overnight, it'll still come off on my hands from the bottom. So give it at least 12 hours like this and then try to flip it over on its side so the bottom dries as well. And then tomorrow, it'll be good to use. Alright you guys, so that is it for this tutorial on the dip method of painting your miniatures. I'm going to give this miniature away to somebody down in the comments, so if you enjoyed this video, please go down there, uh, shoot me a nice comment or something to contribute to the conversation on painting miniatures, and I will choose somebody from down below to receive this video and I'll send it to you in the mail. Uh, if you decide to try the dip method, please show us pictures of that, we would love to see them. You can tweet them at me or throw them down in the comment section. Uh, I'd love to see them. And until next time, keep it rolling, adventurers.